Okay guys, it's time to dive into the synth engine section and scanner, and this is the topmost portion of the interface in the B panel view. Now what we're talking about here is really the sound creation portion of scanner. What we have is our sample display that we're used to seeing from our A panel view, but we also have these modulation sources over here to the left. Now as we've described, each one of these sources has something to say about how scanner moves through the sample. Now for purposes of illustration, I have selected Snapshot 7 in the first snapshot bank, which is called Twin Retro. And this is going to show you how the, uh, these modulators work. Now in our first example, we're going to only be hearing the effect of the envelope as a modulation source. As you can see, none of the other modulation sources are active, right? Both of these oscillators are turned to zero. The LFO and feedback are both in the 12 o'clock position which means that the only information that scanner is receiving on how to move through the sample is being provided by the envelope, which is basically turned almost to the max. And here's what it sounds like. Now, as you'll have seen, the green line, which is our playhead, which is now moving back to the left, made this movement from left to right based upon what the envelope was telling it to do, how the envelope was telling it to scan. If I were to pull this back, and instead of having it crank to where it is, crank it all the way back to the 12 o'clock position, and I press a key, you don't hear anything. The reason why you don't hear anything is because it's not scanning anything. It doesn't have any information to tell it where to scan the sample, so it's just staying in complete in a complete static state. It's not actually moving through the sample. It's only once we begin to crank this up that you, that you hear it begins to move. Right? When we have it cranked to this low position, it's scanning very slowly across the sample. Right? It's only when we start cranking it up that it's going to move with any kind of speed across the sample. Now here's where these, these two uh, faders underneath LFO and envelope come into play. Because these allow us to set the range within which the, uh, the modulator will work. When we're set all the way over here to this percent sign, what it's telling scanner is that it's going to use the full range of the sample. And that this envelope, this envelope modulation will work within the full range of the sample. But when we crank it down to this uh, millisecond, all the way on the other side, it's working only within a plus or minus 100 milliseconds, right? So this is a very small range. In fact, it's not even really within our audible range. We're not hearing anything. It's actually scanning. And this is a good, a good point at which to introduce the, uh, the zoom function here in the sample display. This is very handy. This, this uh, zoom function allows us to really zero in on an individual portion of the sample or portions and to see as we zoom in you see it is in fact scanning but it's doing it so slowly that we can't even really hear it now as we begin to drag I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we we keep seeing the playhead as we begin to drag this fader from milliseconds over to a more expanded view of the sample you hear that now it's traveling in a much greater range and now we're beginning to hear the effect right it's moving very slowly across there I can also do the reverse and crank this uh, into the negative direction in which case it will go backward now you may be asking yourself at this point well, how do you determine where the center, you know, where this, the playhead actually starts uh, before it's modulated by any of these things? And this is where these two controls at bottom come in. This one at bottom is called the course position slider. And what this determines is essentially the, the center point around which the modulation will occur. So you see that as I moved it, it moved it followed the slider over and then it centered itself basically where the slider is. Right? 
right? So we can scroll to whatever point in the sample we wish to use, and this playhead will follow. Now above, we have what's called the Find Position slider. Once you've selected a course position, the Find Position slider allows you to achieve more fine grain control over the playhead. So it establishes a range around the course position slider that you'll be working. So if I zoom into our sample and I start to move this, you'll begin to see or, or hear that it actually is altering the fine range of the, of the sample playhead modulation. I know that sounds a little confusing. It's actually more easily illustrated when we get into some of the other modulation sources. So now that we've explored the envelope, I want to uh, turn to the LFO and examine this. We haven't used this yet. And now that we've set it back to zero, we're not hearing any sound. Now once I start to crank this LFO, we get a much different effect. It's really an interesting kind of percussive effect. You see what it's doing. We have it in the center position here, so it's using kind of a kind of half of the range of the sample, I guess. It's uh, not using the full range, and it's also not on the millisecond side. But you see it's scrolling back and forth based on the LFO, how much of the LFO modulation I have dialed in. Now as I raise that, it's a larger range. I kind of like that sound. Now as I move this fine position slider, you see it's very subtly changing the fine position range. And of course I can zoom back out and uh, use the course position slider to get to a different area. And of course the same, uh, as we were discussing before, the same fader uh, movements happen here. So we have plus or minus 100 milliseconds if we're all the way to the left, which results in basically a very small range within which the LFO modulation will, will occur, or if we crank it all the way to, to this percent sign, we're working within the full range of the sample. Now it might be good to introduce these two uh, parameters here at this point. Now speed is the rate at which the, the course position slider moves the playhead. Right, so I'm going to move this uh, back a little bit. And if I move this to a different position, it's going to move through the sample at regular speed. One is regular speed. But now if I crank this up and I move through the sample, it's going to move much, much more quickly. And the same goes uh, in the reverse. If you move below one, you're going to move much more slowly through the sample with course position slider movements. You see how it's, it's making its way over there. But it's taking a, a lot longer. Above the uh, the speed knob, and I'm going to turn this back up to one. Is what is it applies only to this fine position slider, and this is a low pass filter that serves to smooth the movement of the fine position slider. So you see that if we, um, or you hear rather that when we have these fine position movements we have this low pass filter that we can use to smooth it if we don't have it turned on at all it's, it's a much uh, more kind of ragged sound and if we crank this down really crank up the uh, low pass it smooths things out a bit now you'll notice that more with kind of harsher sounds that that this is useful for taking off kind of the uh, the metallic edge on some of those fine position movements when you're in a more, let's say, a more metallic sounding sample. Now let's move over to these oscillators, oscillator A and B over here, and these are really another part of, of the core of scanner sound. These oscillators serve to modulate the playhead position in the same way that the LFO and the envelope do, but the oscillators have an additional uh, dimension, which is that they themselves can be modulated by the LFO. 
So let's let's get a fine let's get a close view here and take a look at how these oscillators serve to modulate the playhead position. Now, of course, we're back to zero. We're not hearing any sound. If I crank this up, you start to see this is going to start moving back and forth. We get real in there really tight, and as I crank up this oscillator. You hear that it, it, it's moving within a small range, but it's definitely altering the playhead position. Now, importantly, what you're hearing here is not the oscillator itself. You're hearing the oscillator wave modulate the playhead position. So that's important because it's a little confusing to talk about oscillators without talking about actually hearing them. But what we're doing is using them as a modulation source. Now, where this gets interesting is when you use the LFO in concert with the oscillator. So we can do kind of a two-part modulation, right? We can have the LFO modulate the oscillator movement, which in turn modulates the playhead position. So let's see how this works. Now underneath both, both oscillator A and B, we have a, an LFO uh, modulation range. If I crank this, you begin to hear that LFO is now modulating oscillator A. It's hard to see because we don't really have any rate dial, or we don't really have the uh, depth dialed in here, so... There we go. And now you hear it. The LFO is modulating the oscillator, which is in turn modulating the playhead position. If I crank negative modulation, it follows that as well. this negative. And then of course I can bring oscillator B into the mix as well. So sky's the limit on this stuff and, and as, you, as we get into some of the other snapshots you'll see that this is used uh, to, to quite significant effect, uh, the modulation of the oscillators. Now, a final tweak in this is that you can use feedback to modulate the playhead position, which is kind of a wild way of doing it. And I, and I should say up front, it leads to some kind of harsh sounds. So you want to be uh, a little careful with how you use this. As you start to bring in feedback, you hear that it, you'll hear the feedback and it's modulating the playhead position. Uh, but m mostly creating a noise, uh, just kind of a straight noise wave. And you see that down here. Now, as a final note, uh, you see up here above the sample display, I've saved this for last because it's a, a cool feature that you'll want to know about, is a sample selector. So we're not limited to one sample for our range of, uh, of uh, modulations here. We can scroll through these. Right? And these you'll, you'll recognize from some of the other snapshots. But there are also a couple empty spaces to put our own samples in. We'll get into that later on. But I just wanted you to be aware of that. So no need to limit yourself to one. If you, like, if you have a snapshot that you like, uh, you like the way it's moving through the sample, for example, you might try using it with a different sample and see if, if it uh, produces results you like as well. So that covers the synth engine section. And now we're going to go down below to the polyphonic processing unit and understand how it's going to take the sample playback position information and send it through a variety of other processing units that create some really cool effects and really out there sound. Okay guys, there's one thing that I forgot to mention earlier, and that is the range within which the fine position slider works. Now I've selected a snapshot called all time low, which is snapshot bank three, snapshot number three. And you'll see that in the course position slider, we have kind of this gray area outside of the slider itself. And you'll see this on, on the different snapshots. It kind of varies from snapshot to snapshot. But what this tells you is the range within which the fine position slider will work. Right? So this establishes the center point of that range, and then the gray area uh, extends to the full range. So when we play a note, excuse me, you'll see that the playhead is kind of wiggling around within that range and as I move the fine position slider it's it, it's moving I mean it's hard to see because we're we're zoomed pretty far out but if we zoom all the way in 
you can see that it's moving there when I adjust the find position slider. But if you want to make this range larger or smaller, the thing to do is to come over here underneath the course position sliders, this up and down arrow. And if you click on that and drag it up, oops, drag it up or down, you'll see that that gray area surrounding the course position slider begins to move outward. As you, as you drag it up, it begins to move outward. That is extending the range of the fine position slider. Now the center point is still the same, right? It's still the same center point for the course posi position slider. But what you'll find is that now the fine position slider will, will work within a larger range, right? So if I, I can use this to toggle through a much broader range of the sample than I had available before. And once I narrow that range, of course, I'm confined to a narrower band. So that's just something to bear in mind when making those fine adjustments.